When people think of coming up with great business ideas, we picture scenes in movies like The Social Network where Mark Zuckerberg comes up and there's this light bulb moment where he just comes up with this idea. But you're probably not aware that most great ideas come from people working actively to generate great ideas and then they fine tune and prioritize the ones they wanna take action on. And so that's why in this video, I wanna teach you methods to come up with great startup ideas. But I'm not only gonna do that, I'm also gonna teach you how you can prioritize which one to take action on first. What is up, my friends? Welcome back to the Startup Studio. I'm Christian Peverelli, co-founder at We Are No Code, and we teach people how to build startups leveraging no code, which is this awesome new technology that allows you to build apps, websites, and much more. So if you're interested in becoming a founder of the future and building your own company, then subscribe to this channel right now. Okay, so when we talk about coming up with awesome business ideas, yes, it's possible that that idea will just come to you in a moment, or you might be experiencing some kind of problem, and then you can come up with an idea for a great product. But oftentimes, we want want to make this an active process instead of passively waiting for one of these light bulb moments to happen to us. And regardless of which method you use to come up with these ideas, you want to be sure to write down these ideas so you can later analyze them and go a little bit deeper and then choose one of them to take action on because we don't want to be scattered all over the place testing out a thousand different ideas. It ends up wasting a huge amount of time for founders. I can tell you from experience. And you have to have three main components to make a full business idea. One of those is the customer. The second one, is the problem that that customer has. And the third one is the business model that you're gonna to use to transform this idea into a business. Okay, so now the first method to come up with business ideas is called the problem-based approach. And if you've already listened to any podcast or learned anything about entrepreneurship, you probably know that people ask about the specific problem that you are solving for a customer. Why? Because problems are oftentimes things that humans don't like and we're willing to pay money to not have these problems again or to help us solve them. So LegalZoom, for example, solves the problem that starting a business is incredibly tedious and sometimes quite expensive. In our company, We Are No Code, we know that a lot of people are not coders, but they need to build a platform to launch their business. So that's what we help people with, the problem of not being technical and wanting to launch a business and also just not having that much experience launching businesses. And Tinder solves the problem of having to find a date. And if you dig a little bit deeper, pretty much any business that you can imagine has some kind of a problem behind it. So by identifying problems and who is having them, we can oftentimes build build products, build companies that are going to be able to solve those for individuals. A great example of that is the founder of Dropbox who had a specific problem. He was one day going from his home to work and he had forgot his flash drive, which actually had all of his work on it. And he was really frustrated with the situation. So he told himself, I never want this to happen again. And then he created the cloud storage system that is Dropbox today. So here the strategy is to find problems that happen on a recurring basis. For 30 days, I want you to come up with problems that you are experiencing or other people around you are experiencing as well. And I want you to write those down and then you can transform those into potential solutions that could solve that problem. So if each day you just come up with three problems, at the end of these 30 days, you're going to have a list of 90 different problems you could potentially solve. So make sure to write down your problems. One thing with this technique I often see is that people come up with a very specific solution to a problem, but oftentimes there's several solutions that we could use to solve the problem itself. So don't be too closed about coming up with more than one solution for each given problem that you have. The second method of coming up with business ideas comes from Peter Thiel. He's one of the founders of PayPal and he also runs Palantir Technology. Really weird guy, but he's an amazing entrepreneur and wrote a book called Zero to One. If you haven't checked it out, probably want to do that. In one of his books, he asks one key question. What amazing business of the future is not being built today? And so the concept behind the future-based approach of coming up with ideas is all about predicting the future, right? It's essentially looking at trends those could be political, those could be social, those could be technological, or all sorts of trends really, and really predicting where we see that going and then building a business or building a solution with that specific trend in mind of what the future will look like. So no, this is not about looking in a crystal ball and knowing the future. It's literally just looking at specific trends. So for example, there was a political change that essentially allowed people to start doing crowdfunding, so to raise money from the crowd for their startups. And that dramatically dramatically influenced the number of successful startups that started popping up that allowed people to do this kind of crowdfunding. So you can see that just one political change or a 
trend can completely can give way to lots of opportunity. And especially these days with the financial crisis and the repercussions of COVID, there are so many things that are changing and those changes are giving way to lots of opportunities. So try to come up with five to 10 trends and then come up and write down opportunities that might be presented in the future because of those trends. A technological trend, for example, that gave way to an awesome opportunity was the opening of open AI, which allows people to leverage AI within what they're building. Amazing companies were created like Copy AI or Jasper to be able to leverage this technology just based on one trend change. The third method is called idea sourcing, basically going out there and coming up with ideas by being inspired by other people. Now here, I'm not telling you to rob people's ideas. We can go on websites like Angel List or Product Hunt or Beta List to be able to find awesome ideas. And then you can slightly adapt those ideas so they can become completely different opportunities in the market. There are also online repertoires where people are actually giving away ideas. You can listen to podcasts that could be useful towards that research, great ideas to build in 2023, for example, and you'll find a couple articles and that might give you a little bit of inspiration. And then you can develop upon that base idea, right? You don't just want to take an idea and just copy it. I mean, you could do that, but oftentimes you want to have some kind of an original twist to something that might have been done before. Method number four, the remora strategy. I'm actually the one who calls it that. A remora fish is a fish that essentially lives off of much larger mammals in the ocean. So they help sharks, for example, clean their teeth. And in exchange, they get free transportation and get free food. And so the remora strategy is about identifying a large and growing business where there are opportunities, smaller opportunities to build million dollar companies with products that are related. So for example, Airbnb is a very successful company. You could come up with an idea where, oh, well, most hosts in Airbnb actually need those mini shampoos and shower gel. And it must be really frustrating for them to go every single month out to buy new ones. Maybe you create a subscription box that allows people to get that on a monthly basis. And because a company like Airbnb is never going to get into the market to start selling shampoos, it's a perfect opportunity for you to take advantage of. In addition, their growth is going to provide more demand for your product. So you actually are able to ride on the shoulders of giants. So right now I want you to identify three companies that you like that are growing and awesome, and then come up with specific businesses that might be able to serve other products and services to those same customers. By the way, if you want to learn step by step how to come up with great business ideas, we have an awesome course in our academy that's called the We Are No Code Academy. And you can sign up for only 49 bucks and you can literally just follow these things step by step and very much in depth. Excellent. Now, strategy number five is called niche it down. So for those of you who don't know what a niche is, it's actually a smaller segment of the customer base. And what we're really trying to do here is to identify platforms or companies that really service a wide range of different customers and then to choose one small segment of those customers that we believe we can service better. So a great company that I trained called Butterfly, for example, they created an Uber for handicapped people. Handicapped customers have different needs. They need the support of the driver, for example, to help them to be able to bring them from the home into the vehicle. Sometimes they even have a wheelchair, so they need help and support doing so, which means that maybe the vehicle that they need is different. So by catering to those specific needs, we're able to be better than large companies at servicing specific small segments of the market. And that's the whole strategy behind Niche It Down. So come up with a couple companies that are really servicing a large number of people. It might be a company like Upwork or Udemy, and then find a specific customer that you feel is not being properly served. And then think of a specific segment that you might want to target as a whole entire new business. One of the keys here is to make sure that there are slightly different needs than just the general thing they're getting with this other company. You add value, people will come to you for that specific service. Now, number six is digitalization. Digitalization is basically the fact that everything is going online. And those old fax machines or doing things by writing it down on pen and paper are no longer as efficient as they could be. So here the strategy is to identify places where paper, pen, fax machines, or any kind of old school way of doing things are taking place and then to figure out what might be a good way to solve this problem with a digital product. And that's because these days everything is happening online. Whether you're selling software, an app, a t-shirt or apples, you're going to need to have some kind of a platform that can showcase them like a website. You might even have an app. And the great thing is that you might be able to digitalize or create software that solves this problem for someone in a better way. So the strategy here is to understand things that are still happening manually and that could be more effective and then to digitalize them either through business automation so you can create automations or building software around those things. Now, if you follow these steps for just 30 days, you're going to have a huge list of ideas. But now we come up with the bigger problem, right? It's that we can't take action with all these different ideas. So which one do we choose? And here, usually what we're going to do is a decision 
matrix. So essentially, you can line up all those different ideas. You can come up with criteria and rate them from one to 10 from those different criteria. For example, how good are the customers? Do they have a lot of money? Do they not have a lot of money? Are they easy to access? Are they not? Another criteria might be, is this a good fit for me? Am I passionate about this? Could I work on this for the next three to five years, 10 years even? Another one might be, how large is this market, right? Is this a really big opportunity? Is this a small opportunity? You got my point. You want to really come up with the criteria for this decision-making process. And then what you want to do is rate each one of those ideas from one to 10 in that specific criteria. You come up with the total and then you can rank them. And it's not because one of those ideas is ranked number one that you have to choose that. It just gives you a way for you to be able to visualize which one might be the best to take action on. But ultimately, that is up to you. If you're enjoying this video, like and subscribe, watch other videos. And if you want to learn how to launch your business, check out wearenocode.com. We'd love to help you do that. We teach people how to build apps and websites themselves with no code, no developers needed, and how to launch your business cost-effectively. See you in the next one. Let's go.